What's up guys, this is Marcus, and I'm here today on behalf of my good friends at Personas who've asked me to do some video content for the 3.2 release. So in usual Personas fashion, even though they've given us some major updates with things like the console shaper and VCAs, we also see a number of workflow enhancements to come with 3.2. So I thought what we would do quickly is go over some of those first. Now the first time you load up 3.2, you might notice something different here, as we now have this icon over here, we hover our mouse over it, we have a range tool in the upper event area. So when we enable that option, essentially what this has given us is an even smarter arrow tool. So it still functions the exact same way it did before, where we can adjust our fade ins, fade out, and our event gain. But in addition to that, we can now make our range selection with one tool, instead of having to swap back between the range tool, which is very, very powerful. Now to take that one step further, in addition to that, we've got some new shortcuts here. So for example, by making a range selection and double clicking, we can separate the event based on that range selection. Or by hovering our mouse over a specific point and double clicking, we can separate the event here. Or we can do multiple range selections by holding down our shift key, and then we can make multiple range selections all at once, and we have the same split commands available. Very powerful stuff. Now, in addition to that, they've also given us a new zoom shortcut. So by holding down shift option, alt on a PC, you'll notice that we have this magnifying glass. And then based on what we drag the magnifying glass across, we can automatically zoom into a selection here. Holding down the same two modifier keys and doing a single click will return us to that same state. And the cool thing about this is we can actually zoom across multiple tracks if we wanna have a specific selection that we wanna look at. And then of course, a single click to return us. And we can do this as many times as we need to, if we need to hone in on a specific part, or we need to dial in and get right down to a zero crossing point. It's very easy now. Now we also have a new way that we can render our instrument tracks to audio very easily. All we have to do is essentially drag and drop a MIDI event down to an audio track, and it's automatically going to render. So in this case, I've got a simple drum loop with an instrumental backing track. And I want to be able to quickly render this down so that I can take some strain off my system if I want to do a recording. I'm just going to drag and drop it to an audio track. You can see that Studio One is rendering an audio version. Then we can just go ahead and we can temporarily get rid of this track altogether and turn off the instrument. Now we have an audio version of that track extremely quickly. Now another new option that we have here is we've always had the ability to drag and drop a plugin, which would essentially just copy it to another track. But what happens if we wanted to move one? We'd have to drag and drop and then remove it from the first location. So now by holding down Option or Alt on a PC, we can simply move a plugin instead of copying it. So small little feature, but definitely comes in handy. Now we've also got some new keyboard shortcuts available. We've always been able to tab to our next hotspot by clicking the tab key. But now with a new shortcut, the shift tab, we can actually create a range and continuously extend it to the next hotspot. Now we can also move the end of that range selection back by holding down shift command delete. And I've taken this a step further and I've mapped out a couple more that I find useful, which allows me to adjust the beginning of my range. Very powerful stuff. Now all these enhancements really come into play when we start working with automation. So that's what we're gonna have a look at in the next video.